It is six o'clock. It's time to call the Sherwood City Council meeting to order. At this time, I would like to ask Alderman McMahon to lead us in our prayer tonight. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you tonight that we have this opportunity and have had a good experience over the weekend with our Thanksgiving, and we are very thankful for all the blessings that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for the grace that you bestowed upon us, the safety and protection you provide for us. And we pray tonight, Father, that you will lead and guide our thoughts, our actions, and the things we say and do, that they would all be done in honor, in a way that would honor you and honor our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for all of our city council members, our mayor, the leaders of this city. We pray for our employees, our department heads, our police officers, firefighters. And we also pray for uh, all of our military personnel. We pray your protection over all of them. Now, Father, we commit this into your hands for your guidance in our lives tonight. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you call the roll, please? Brooks? Here. Harmon? Here. Lily? Here. Men? Here. Hi? Here. Keplinger? Here. Sanders? Here. Williams? Here. Approval of minutes of the regular meeting on October 23rd, 2017 is transcribed. So Move for adoption. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. You have copies of the October 2017 financials in your packet. Are there any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. No discussion. Next item on agenda, um, Council Member Williams has a presentation that she would like to make to Seven Hills High School Honor Society. I'd like, um, Mayor, if you'll come down with me, and, and Darcy Benham, the sponsor for Seven Hills High School, come down.
And Joe's getting stronger with the coordinators, and they're the ones that talk to all their friends into coming and doing this. Um, Isabel, Serena, okay. William Mayo, Jared Mayo. Okay. I just want to thank you for taking this vision that Ms. Brooks and I talked about with Ms. Sanders about helping some of the senior citizens in Ward 3. And we hope that we can utilize y'all every year because you solve the needs of the students. They've done this for the fourth year, but the first time that they actually are going to come to the next year. Yeah, great photo and a big round of applause for you. our young people. Next item on the agenda is waive the reading requirement. Is there a motion to waive the reading requirement except for items 10 and 11? So, so moved. moved. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 At this time I would like to ask John Swanson Executive Director of MIMS to come forward. He has an update for us and some information. Madam Mayor, members of City Council and resident citizens of Sherwood, I'm John Swanson, the Director of MIMS. I'm honored to be able to uh, present an annual report to you and an update on what we've been going on, what's been going on at MIMS. Uh, we'll talk about clinical operations and our system performance and introduce the uh, concept of BLS emergency response. To remind folks who we are, MEMS is a public nonprofit agency. We've been around since 1984. We're uh, actually a Little Rock, a uh, city of Little Rock agency, uh, but operate under Arkansas laws of public facilities. Group. Bill Bowers is our chair. Marina Brooks is the Sherwood rep. And here tonight is Dr. Mike Mason, medical director of MEMS. He's a practicing emergency physician as well as uh, on MEMS campus at least two days a week in a full-time role in training and quality assurance. MEMS is the ambulance provider for Pulaski County except Jacksonville, all of Faulkner, Grant counties, and the Cabot area. So we serve about one-sixth of the state's population. In Sherwood, we have two paramedic units that are here 24-7, and as those units are assigned to calls, additional units are assigned to Sherwood to take additional calls as they may come in. Plus, we use BLS, or basic life support units, for non-emergency uh, transfers. And then tonight, again, I would like to introduce the uh, notion of BLS for emergencies. In addition, we have our special tactics advanced response, or SWAT medics. And you'll see in the news tonight, it was an unfortunate uh, situation in South Little Rock today where MEMS medics were on that call, as well as law enforcement first responder training. Really proud of the relationship we have here with the Sherwood Police Department. Uh, they've received uh, advanced training from MEMS and Clayton Goddard, who is the head of our team. Our medics will deploy with your SWAT team when they're out, uh, but we also participate in real world and training events uh, to include ongoing active shooter procedures. And uh, the whole point of that is that as we look at events around the country, uh, the key is for EMS that we need to reach injured people sooner so that we can stop the dying. We've seen that uh, play out in cities around the United States. It's a major emphasis on what MEMS is about. The Law Enforcement First Responder Program is to train police officers to use tourniquets, chest seal bandages, blood clotting bandages, and the PD department here, police department, has indeed contributed to saving lives using those skills. If you recall back on the 1st of July in Little Rock, the nightclub shooting that we had, 
Uh, we've been invited to go to a national audience and talk about that. But the, the Little Rock Police Department are credited with three tourniquets and a chest seal. Uh, and we credit them with two lives saved that night. Leading control is a key piece of this. It's we abbreviated BCON, but this is tourniquet training for public schools, churches, and places of business. And it's an open invitation to any of the community here who would like to have MEM support you in training how to use tourniquets and uh, practical application is going to be car accidents, potential tornadoes and storms, but God forbid we have that major event where there's a public shooting. Um, in August of this year, we reached over half the public school nurses statewide to offer this tourniquet training. And, it, and again, I'll repeat myself, we want to help spread this skill into the community. It will save lives. Another program that's new in Arkansas but mature in other parts of the country is called Community Paramedicine. This is where paramedics literally are making house calls before the 911 call. The point of this is we need to improve patient care at a lower cost, reduce hospital readmission rates, and lower unnecessary 911 calls. We don't want to ever discourage people from calling 911, but there are uh, odd ways to do interventions on the front end of that uh, to make sure we get people steered to the appropriate health care resource. Our partners in all of this are the patients, the doctors, the hospitals, and the payers, Medicare, Medicaid, and insurance looking for better solutions to make sure people get what they need in the right way. This is a picture of uh, Chandra, uh, but just to make you aware that there is a dedicated unit at MEMS, not an ambulance, uh, where MEMS has already started this program. Medical control, quick word about that with Dr. Mason present tonight. He chairs a committee that's made up of the emergency room doctors from all of the hospitals that MEMS has partnered with, where they evaluate our performance and direct protocol changes and updates and equipment, and it establishes a very strong partnership that we have with all of the hospital emergency departments. That's critical to them. There's a constant clinical performance review. Dr. Mason goes to national conferences and brings back a lot of new ideas. Not of the least of which are new heart monitors that MEMS will begin transitioning into starting in next year's budget. And uh, those cost in the neighborhood of $20,000 a piece. But also for Sherwood, we've completed a trial. The Lucas device is a mechanical CPR device. And we have seen, and I'll show you in a minute, the benefit that that has had for helping us resuscitate patients who suffered cardiac arrest. And we've also recently revised our stroke destination protocol. And this uh, is for the RACE acronym, which means a rapid arterial occlusion evaluation. What that means is that if we identify a patient in the field who presents us with a possible stroke involving a blockage, we immediately transport them to one of the three central Arkansas hospitals that have a neurointerventional cath lab. And that's a recent change, but one that we know is going to improve the outcomes for serious stroke patients. On scene cardiac arrest, we, um, I touched on that a minute ago. But the, the change in this is that we now stay on scene for up to 30 minutes with an emphasis on quality, uninterrupted CPR, starting with the bystanders, starting with the people who are there with the patient. That training, too, is available for free from them. So it's called Friends and Family CPR. But in, the, in this situation, we use the same drugs and electricity that the emergency departments use. That's why that partnership is so important. And we explain to the families what's happening with 30 minutes on scene. The goal is to improve survival. And the first indication of the, or first indicator there is called ROSC, return of spontaneous circulation. And to share with you how this protocol has affected things, in 2015, in the 12 months preceding the protocol change, we had 503 cardiac arrests. 79 of them, we were able to obtain ROSC. 16 of those folks left the hospital. Since we changed the protocol back in late 2015, we've had 1,187 cardiac arrests, 34% successful with ROSC, 65 people have left the hospital, six more of them are still in the hospital, their status is being evaluated. We recognize that at MEMS with what we call the Phoenix Award. Being the old Air Force guy, I have two paramedics that are aces. They have had five successful in-field in resuscitation. That's been a, uh, something we're very proud of. On our performance, you'll see over time that starting back in 2006, the run volume, the blue represents the patients that we transported. The red on top of that are those 911 calls where we did not transport. You'll see that we've trans responded in 2017. If we projected out at the rate we're at, we estimate 4,282 emergency responses in the city of Sherwood. 
and about 22% of those are no transport. When you see our response times, uh, that clock is running on all 4,282 of those emergency runs. You see over the past few years that that's taken a pretty good uh, incline in terms of the volume. Average response time in minutes, we're now at seven minutes response time on average for all of those 4,282 calls. That has inched upward a little bit and we need to address improving that. And can, uh, at the same time, our goal of 90% on time arrivals within nine minutes has uh, slipped below the goal of 90%. And another reason why uh, you'll see me talking in a minute about ways that we can improve that performance. It's obviously a very high priority item for us. The response time issue though is really a function of the multiple calls. With that volume going up, the two crews that we have here, PEMS automatically will assign a replacement unit or another ALS unit to come to Sherwood as soon as the second unit is called out. But if we get a third call before that third unit is in within the city limits, we're gonna probably have a call that is longer than nine minutes. We're constantly evaluating where we have our station, where the calls are located within the city, time of day, and the nature or severity of those calls. And this brings us to wanting to propose adding BLS units for some of those emergencies to allow us to preserve the ALS or paramedic units for the higher priority calls. And for everybody's, uh, make everybody aware of what we're talking about. An ALS or advanced life support ambulance has a paramedic and an EMT on board. A BLS or basic life support unit has two EMTs. But at MEMS, the lead EMT is somebody who has to have at least a year's experience and additional training and pass Dr. Mason's test to make sure that they're ready to go. This is called a tiered system meaning we have two layers, actually three layers at MEMS of ambulance. We've been using this tiered system since 2006, but we've been, to this point only been using them for non-emergency transports. So those leads, again, have to have experience, additional training, and the medical director signs off on each one of them individually to allow them to do this work. So in order to do the BLS emergencies, it requires a dispatch process that is recognized by the Department of Health of meeting the criteria to do this. MEMS recently achieved an international standard of accreditation called ACE. Uh, so our dispatch center is one of two in Arkansas and only 249 throughout the world that have been accredited to meet this international standard. And in this, we group the categories of response by severity, alpha being the least, echo being the most severe or serious emergency, and BLS is only eligible for the lowest acuity calls. So how does it work? Calls are received in the MEMS Dispatch Center, and every call is presumed to be an ALS response unless the information that we have tells us clearly that BLS would be okay. That would amount to about 13% of all the calls we do. But if a BLS unit is not nearby, we'll still send the paramedic unit anyway to avoid the delay. In Little Rock, we had to get approval from both the State Board of Health and the City of Little Rock to conduct a trial. That trial lasted about a year. And in that period of time, and within the city of Little Rock, we answered 32,000 calls. 2,500 of those, 7.7%, were eligible for BLS and got a BLS response. There were no problems at all. 14 times the BLS crew asked for an ALS unit to back them up. But in each case, it was out of an abundance of caution and there were no negative patient outcomes. So consider the success uh, trial here. Well, the city of Little Rock has already changed the ordinance that allows us to continue to do BLS emergencies in Little Rock permanently, uh, that has already occurred. If Sherwood agrees, then there would be no change in ALS coverage. We still have two units here all the time. We're proposing to add additional resources. We estimate, looking at historical data, that about 13% of the calls in Sherwood would also be BLS eligible. Again, if the BLS unit were not nearby, we would still send the ALS to avoid a delay. But to make this effective, we require an amendment to the interlocal agreement that we have with Sherwood and the city of Little Rock would also have, the city council there would also have to agree. And because each of these interlocal agreements is a separate agreement, then I will be approaching both each city and county form ports that we serve to, as I am tonight asking in Sherwood, so I have to do that independently. And with that, I've got a lot of information out there, and, but I know I don't have over three minutes. <laughs> But if, if there's any questions, I may, please. I have one. So uh, Little Rock, your trial in Little Rock of your, your BLS um, uh, eligibility.
acceptable dispatches was was just under eight percent. Right. And you're, you're expecting just under thirteen percent here based on previous call. Why 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 the difference? Thank you. I should have explained that. What we did was, uh, as we gained experience in the city of Little Rock, we expanded the eligible calls from our own experience. So um, there are more calls that are eligible now than we started. So that number has grown with our experience. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So uh, when you guys are looking at where the calls are taking place, mm -hmm. is that a change over the last several years? Think, Gravel Ridge, when you added Gravel Ridge to us, that fell under the city's time response criteria. And that is a challenge for us because simply the driving distance. We've looked at moving, having two stations, but when you look at the distribution of the calls, the challenge would be that as soon as the Sherwood truck got a call, the Gravel Ridge truck would have to come back down to Sherwood anyway, because most of the calls are going to be obviously in the population density of this area. So while we have a few calls in the Gravel Ridge area, that truck would be grossly underutilized and add delays in coming back to Sherwood itself. So we are, our, our opinion is, our judgment is, that we'll get the best overall performance by keeping the truck. That's not, that's not sure and if we could find a station that is better suited for us, I would also concede the point that uh, we were at a uh, location where we lost the lease and the best we could find, and we're still searching. So if we can find a location available to us in a better location, we'll move tomorrow. The emergency calls are going to be mostly uh, people in on the highway or people in their homes. We do certainly get nursing home runs, um, but the majority would be highway and homes. Well, we appreciate you coming tonight, and, and we appreciate the service that you provide to our residents. You have a very professional, top-notch. Ma'am, we're glad to be able to continue to offer without having to request any financial support. Thank, Thank you, you for that. And I think next month, John, are you going to try to have an ordinance ready to yeah. present to? You know, I've discussed that already. My, uh, I'm not available. I'm, my calendar is already conflicted with the 18th. So, um, but yes, that would be. I think where we are is to request the, re the resolution that I come to the next one, or perhaps you won't need. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Committees and organizations <coughs> advertise and promotion commission. A resolution reappointing Danny Gillian to the Sherwood Advertising and Promotion Commission. Move for adoption of the resolution. Second. Second. Lily. Aye. Kiplinger. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Sanders. Aye. Williams. Aye. 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 McMahon. Aye. Steve, before you um, read that, I just want to, I was going to just make my report real fast. I need opportunity. <laughs> uh, we will not meet in December. Um, that we have no December meetings. Our next meeting will be the first meeting, uh, first Wednesday in January. And also, real quickly, just want to thank Paul Brown. I saw him come in the back. He's had a lot of work to get our trail of lights ready um, and the rest of the Parks and Rec Department also. Um, and thanking in advance the City Clerk's Office and the Police Department for all they're going to have to do coming up. But thank you, Paul, uh, for that hard work getting the lights on tonight and Steve Cobb's grandson got to turn the lights on and just a short little glitch but um, they came on and thanks out. thanks to everybody who came out tonight I appreciate the council members who were able to attend okay, now. an ordinance providing for the adoption of an advertising and promotion commission budget for the city of Sherwood Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1 2018 and ending December 31 2018 Appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure other than provided for, declaring an emergency, and for other purposes. Um, I, there is a sheet attached to the budget. That's the explanation page. Does anyone have any questions? Move for the adoption. Second. Lily. Aye. Kiplinger. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Sanders. Aye. Williams. Aye. 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 There is an emergency clause. Why do we need one? It's there. I mean, I'm just. I I I think I agree. 
because it's not going to be in the, in the first years. Okay. Okay. No, we won't November. do that. Perfect. Okay. Back to you. Okay. Civil Service Commission, Parks and Recreation Committee. Uh, we were unable to meet last month due to a family emergency amongst our Parks and Recreation family. And so our meeting has been set for uh, the first Monday in December instead of the second Monday in December, which is different from our regular calendar. And it's 6 o'clock at the Magnolia Room in uh, the Bill Harmon Rec Center. Very good. Personnel Committee? We did not meet. Um, we will uh, probably not have a meeting on December the 7th. I don't have anything on the agenda as of right now, but December the 7th at 5 if we do. Very good. Planning Commission? An ordinance amending the city land use plan and for other purposes. Is there any discussion? I have a, a question, question about this. One. I do yeah. too. Me yeah. too. The, in reading of the minutes, thank you. <laughs> it appeared to me that this ordinance came about in an attempt to do an end run around the council's um, amendments to the uh, zoning regulations that moved many warehouses to C4 and that the result of the passage of this would result in mini storage being able to be placed on this tract through a PUD or PCD. Yes. The and PUD or the PCD, as I understand it, the regulations will have to be amended because at present they're only a C1 or a C2. Can you explain what, what the... This was brought about, as I understand it, a developer had come in and, and made an application uh, for this strip of land at 4101 East Keel Avenue. And on the, on the land use plan right now, it showed it a single, single family. And all of Keel, I think, is proposed to be C3 at some point or another, or at least is shown that way. And they felt, the commission felt it was appropriate to ask for a change to the land use plan. Steve, I drove out there today. And... This property is not on Keel. This property is behind the USA storage. It is the wooded area behind it. There is no vacant property on Keel. It is between that and what was it, maybe even Austin Lakes. It's between that and Austin Lakes. And so it's almost like that company is wanting to expand into that wooded area behind them, which I mean they're not even kind of like on Keel either. They're behind something else. So I mean, I had a hard time finding it. I actually found it think I think this did come about as a result of that developer's request. But there was discussion in, in, at the meeting about changing, giving the developer the opportunity to use the PUD. And, and I think I said in the minutes, I'd have to go back and listen to it, but I think I said that's going to sound like an end run to the council because we just said you have to have C4 for, for, uh, for storage. And I think that's what was, a, was a, being um, advocated for by the developer on this. Well, I totally agree with Councilman Harmon over there because I read the same thing and I read the minutes and it actually, your exact words were that you know, this looks like we're, we, by our vote, would be creating our own loophole in something we just did to stop this, that kind of construction. So if it's not a C4, I would be opposed to this area being any storage? Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, and until I, I, yeah, I'm nervous with this until I get some clarification um, on how this would affect, uh, how this would affect the treatment of that property as far as commercial uh, development and whether the uh, mini storage, and I mean, normally I'm the one up here preaching that we don't zone property based on usage, but this isn't a zoning request. This is a change to amending the city land use plan and a change to the city land use plan is a much more drastic request than a zoning request. Um, and in this case, plus the fact that it appeared to be uh, initially at the planning commission level, a end run, an attempt to be an end run around our uh, already obvious intent on behalf of the citizens to move those uh, units out to C4s, I'd have to oppose this. Well, especially since 
the land isn't, you're not talking about a strip of land directly on Tequila. You're talking about a strip of land that's adjacent to the neighborhood. Right. So the single family home use is, a, is appropriate. It's not the same. Potentially. Is this a separate parcel? It does back up. It's, it's, the, it's, a, right, it's the land behind the USA storage. Which toward, backs, the, toward the neighborhood. Which backs, backs up into that neighborhood. Backs up to that into Park Crest Apartments and the trailer park on Brookswood. So there's a lot of homes. I mean, whether it's single family or multifamily, there are, it a is a residential area. area. It's not a commercial area. But it's currently acting as a buffer. It's a buffer. It's all it is right now. Mm -hmm. And I think would it go more than 300 feet deep, which is typically... Yes. Well, I'll just try to look on Google Earth and try to judge it, but I think it does. I mean, that's my judgment anyway. Well, I had to. I drove at least yeah. five blocks north of Keel to be able to go around it. But it's not on Keel. There's no There's no piece of, there's no of dirt that touches Keel. You're going to go right. through the neighborhoods. What's the council's pleasure? You want to remand this or take a vote and vote it down? What, what's your pleasure? Is there anyone here that, that would like to speak? It's on the property here, perhaps. No, it's, it, Don't, I think it's on. No one's back there wants to speak. Are you the owner of the property? Uh, no. How many blocks is it, Les? Four or five blocks deep? And in lieu of us not having a, a staff engineer, or, I think in the future I would like, um, before these come forward, my sponsorship on I think I would like someone from the, um, our planning commission chair perhaps in the future. I'm going to ask our planning commission in the future to, to be present at these meetings and to, because you know, I'm not at that meeting. I know our city attorney is, but they might perhaps give us a little more insight on, on what the intent is. But, can, uh, I, can we? Can I make a motion to oppose this ordinance? Well, can I make a negative? Yeah. Yeah. We can, but I don't think it's it's not a zoning, so it's not going to uh, voting it down. It's not going to keep it from being brought back up. It's because it's not zoning. It's not like a zoning. It's a land use. No, we could come back. You I could table it. it. One time. Table. Table. Yeah. Motion to table. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance amending Ordinance 729 and all subsequent amendments regarding notice requirements of existing note zoning regulations in the city of Sherwood, Arkansas, and for other purposes. Okay, I've got ink on this one, too. Um... I understand the reason for the removal of the return receipts because of rented uh, homes that are owned by uh, landlords and renters and things of that nature. Um, however, they've kind of they're kind of treating it like lawyers treat notice, like uh, attorneys and the courts treat notices. And I think that we have a different purpose. Uh, attorneys send notices out. And uh, I have to be careful when I say that because we've got attorneys in the audience tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, Steve. Uh, um, but uh, attorneys send notices out, and it's they send a notice, and they send, and it's sent by uh, certified mail, uh, return receipt, or registered mail, or however the the particular law will require. And it's it's you go get it, and if you don't get it, you know you're you're uh, at your you're at your own. Uh, I can use I think, a word now, but your peril. It's at your own peril if you don't get the notice. But as representatives of the people, we really, really want people to get the notice. We are, we are, we are, we want to take every step we can to make sure people get notice of things that are going to go on in their neighborhood. If there's a zoning change or something of that nature, we want to make sure they get notice. Towards that end. I've got no problem with removing the return receipt and saying that notice has to be sent by, uh, it should be first class mail, first class mail certified, uh, instead of by certified letter, first class mail certified, uh, but then also by regular first class mail because a lot of people won't go pick up that certified mail. 
And so there should be two sent to every address, one by certified mail and one by first class mail. That way, if there's one just sent by regular first class mail, people are more likely to open that one and see that one than the certified mail one. Is that okay? Agree. Mayor, I have another question similar to I <clears throat> Then that's a, that's a friendly amendment to that's an amendment to the uh, I make that as a motion as an amendment to the ordinance. Second that. Can we have some discussion for the vote? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, in reading the same minutes, the thing I was concerned as to why this was even on the agenda because the minutes of the planning commission was that this article was tabled. So since this was tabled, uh, it was a unanimous vote to table the item. Why are we discussing it here tonight? It's item eight on the minutes from Planning Commission in your packet. I'm sorry, I don't know. So I think this is not be even discussed tonight. I have to agree. Item what? Eight. Item eight. An ordinance amending ordinance number seven two nine and all subsequent amendments regarding notice requirements of existing zoning regulations. Is that not what we're discussing? I think that's an error to zoning. If I recall correctly, there was there was a zoning. Andy well, there, there were two. You're right. Number seven was deferred to staff, and that was a zoning, and number eight was tabled. So neither one of them should be in front of us tonight. We have a planning commissioner here. Do you recall if that was tabled? It was tabled. My point. I think it should be pulled from the agenda. Motion to table. Second. Senior Citizen Committee. I'm call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. Senior Citizen Committee? Sewer Committee? Street Committee? Uh, street Committee did meet. Um, minutes are in your packet. Uh, Brian and his crew are, are real busy uh, sucking up leaves, so get, get them out to the curb if you want the city to get them. Not in the street, just to the curb. Mm. Please, not in the street. That's right. <laughs> An ordinance changing the name of Brookswood Street to Brockington Road. This is the second reading of the ordinance. What's the pleasure of the council? Move for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. We're going to have to have a suspension of the rules first, vote on that, and then go to a third right. reading because Suspend we read the rules this. To put it on third reading. Second. Huh? I thought we we vote on the read first reading, then we have We've read it once, and then I've read it a second time, and you can make a motion to suspend the rules and place it on the oh. third this reading. This is one of the ones that we did not vote right. on. Right. Oh, we I did not you. waive reading on that. We did not I waive the you. reading on ten. Lily. Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance changing the name of Brookswood Street to Brockton Road as the third reading of the ordinance. Move for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. Second. Yeah. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance, an, an ordinance establishing business license provisions for medical marijuana businesses operating in the city of Sherwood, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. That is the second reading of the ordinance. We're, we didn't suspend the, we, we read that one time, and I think the, the, the as I recall, we were going to re read this at three different meetings. Correct. Because of the nature. Okay. Uh, an ordinance authorizing business to be conducted between the city of Sherwood and a municipal employee concerning the removal of trees, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Move for the adoption. Second. Second. Aye. 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 There is an emergency clause. Lily. Aye. Keplinger. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Sanders. Aye. Williams. Aye. 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 McMahon. Aye. Uh, members of the council, the next item on the agenda regarding uh, liens to be certified by the Dallas County Tax Collector is also a public hearing. Is there anyone present this evening that wishes to address the council relative to um, the uh, charge against your property regarding uh, grass cutting or the removal of any debris? Is there anybody present? Please let the record show that no one 
uh, wish to address the council. A resolution approving amounts of liens to be certified to the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real properties as a result of grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances by the City of Sherwood, Arkansas and for other purposes. Move for adoption of the resolution. Second. Second. This totaled over $22,000 that we've had to spend on this type of, of cleaning up our city. Just FYI, they're busy back there. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. <clears throat> An ordinance providing for the adoption of a general fund department budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure that are in provided for declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Can I ask a question? The same thing the mayor brought up on the A&P budget. Why are we having emergency clauses on these budgets? It, well, it was it was brought up that it would help the department heads in terms of purchasing if they could go ahead and get the budget passed so they could go ahead and for planning purposes and everything else for I think year. what she meant is we don't need it on there because no. it's no I know but they had asked days. for it at the budget meeting the department heads had. I know I think we just as an oversight we just didn't take we always have an emergency cost because usually it's later in the year and so it just got put on there inadvertently we shouldn't even had it on there Probably. So none of the budgets need the emergency clause because this once we're it's voted on tonight, out. it's how many days for its enacted? days? Well, it's thirty days, 30 for, days. It for it to be enacted, but it doesn't go into force till first of January. That was the first year, so, so they really, can actually make their orders right. into the month of December. Okay, which was the piece. Okay, well then to keep the record kind of square, I'd like to make a motion that we remove the emergency clause language from the budget. From the from all of the from budget. all the budget ordinances that are on the agenda tonight. Second. Second. Lily. Aye. Keplinger. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Sanders. Aye. Williams. Aye. 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 McMahon. Aye. Okay. With that amendment, is there a motion to adopt item 14 well, on the? I've got a question on it first. Okay. Uh, I got my first question answered beforehand. I just was curious. The only uh, revenue item I noticed that was drastically down was court fines and forfeitures. Why is, uh, is there a reason that that's down so dramatically? We used to try to hire somebody or put somebody in there to try to keep that number up. And I was just curious. If it's there was just continually a decline. Um, and it's just the way of, that's just, that's just how it's going to be in the future. That is based upon um, 2017 receipts. Okay. So, you know, and if, if it climbs back up, we can, um, we can adjust that. But we, we, we were, we were. It was necessary that we reflect in our 2018 where our 2017 collections okay. were. That was my only other. Question. And um, in in lieu of that, also, um, we have had some positions um, by attrition, and we have not filled those. So that has made a huge impact, also, on the expense side. All right, but that's a good question. Move for the adoption. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance provided for the adoption of a street fund budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and in December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item provided for therein and for other purposes. Move for the adoption. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a wastewater fund budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31. Sorry? Was on the wrong one? Okay. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a wastewater fund budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure therein provided and for other purposes. You did, you should have received an electronic revision of, of a line item in there. It did not change the, the um, final results of it, but it, there was a, a, a minor change. Move for the adoption of ordinance. Second. Second. 
Lily. Aye. Keplinger. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Sanders. Aye. Williams. Aye. 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 McMahon. Aye. Aye. An ordinance provided for the adoption of a 1% sales tax sewer fund budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018. Appropriating money for each and every item therein, uh, each and every item of expenditure are therein provided for and for other purposes. Move for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. Lilly? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon. Aye. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a court automation budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure then therein provided and for other purposes. Move for the adoption. Second. Lilly? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a department donation budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item uh, therein provided and for other purposes. Move for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. Lilly? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a drug fund department budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure they're provided for and for other purposes. For the adoption. Second. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a federal drug fund budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure therein provided for and for other purposes. Move for the adoption. adoption. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. An ordinance providing for the adoption of a franchise fund budget for the city of Sherwood, Arkansas for the 12 month period beginning January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure therein provided for and for other purposes. Move for adoption. Second. Lily? Aye. Keplinger? Aye. Harmon? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Sanders? Aye. Williams? Aye. 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 McMahon? Aye. Mayor, that is the agenda. Thank you. I'd just like to thank everyone for their help on the budget. Um, it was a relatively smooth process. It helped that the department heads, they submitted very much close to what we could do to begin with. So it really went smooth and um, we would like to have been able to do more of a pay increase, but um, it was agreed upon in budget committee that this, these budgets presented tonight contain a 2% cost of uh, increase for the employees and re a review of it at mid-year at, at this, uh, June 30th end. So hopefully that will come back up for some more discussion. But at this time, it's nice to have it passed and we can order our equipment. Chief can get his new cars on the way and, and get in that lineup sooner. So I appreciate that. Under old business, sales tax discussion. Okay. So uh, I think it was back in, it was either April or May, uh, the, the street committee had, had uh, brought an ordinance forward to pursue um, a, a three-quarter cent sales tax to, to be um, to be used for bonds to do street improvements and capital um capital needs across the city of Sherwood and then a quarter cent sales tax uh, to, to be permanent as operations and maintenance. Uh, we've, we've since that time, I mean, we, we've had, had a lot of discussion. We had a, uh, a, a what we call that meeting, Steve, a, 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 a workshop. There you go. And, and we, we've talked about it uh, several times and um, the street committee feels like we, we we've done our diligence. We we put something in front of the council. There there have been other uh, other items discussed, and, and really, um, it's time to um, 
fish or cut bait with this this thought and and really the uh the questions that that really you know come out is, is you know do do we as a city council want, want to put something forward for citizens to vote on that is um you know, a, a sunset amount uh, or a sunset um, tax that we're going to, you know, definitely sunset in seven or eight years. Do we want to move forward with, you know, the original proposal of the street committee and, you know, do do a sales tax proposal to the public for uh, the purposes of issuing bonds? And uh, I think, you know, w once we move in that direction, then, then we have something. Or once we know what the will of the council is, then we have something we can put together and put to the Department of Finance and Administration because um, they, they have to approve it before we even you know, put an ordinance together and, and move forward there. So, you know, I, I'm really uh, at, at a spot where, um, you know, the street committee, again, I feel like we, we've done our diligence. We, we know, you know, what, what the needs are that are out there. Uh, they're, they're pretty substantial. I think uh, our last estimate said we needed to raise uh, a little over $35 million to complete uh, the projects that we had at hand. And um, really would just like to put it out there for discussion with, with this group, my peers, and, and get an idea of how you guys want to proceed uh, or not proceed. Um, if, if we're not going to move forward with putting something out to the public, then, uh, then I, I'm, I'm ready to, to put this away. Uh, one way or the other. I think we need to proceed. Um, we've been talking about this way for a long time. Agreed. And the city's got a lot of needs in the streets. And so whatever we decide tonight, we need to proceed to go forward and, and be a united front. Okay. I, I agree. I think that we need to um, continue moving forward in the process. Um, I think... Last we left, we were trying to decide whether between a bond option or whatever, or the sunset option, accumulating it, and then you know to do it pay as you go. Thank you. Um, I think we need to kind of make a decision on that as to you know if everybody wants to proceed. I personally feel like we need to do bond because we need to use today's dollars. Um, because it's going to get real expensive in the future with inflation and so forth. So that's one of the decisions we've got to make as well as, you know, there's a lot of others as we move down. But you're right. We definitely need to move that ball, start taking that step forward and making some of these decisions. And I think it's important to notice for, for the residents of Sherwood that there's not an area of the city that will not be, that won't be impacted by the, and benefited from this because in, in some of the areas, not only do the streets need to be widened, some of the some of the gutters need to be worked, the drainage issue that will be accompanying it, because I think that's one of the things that, that we've got to make sure that they understand is that we may be paving a street over here, but you may be getting drainage so your yard doesn't flood. So it's it's going to impact and I think benefit every citizen. And I want, I would like to just add, I've mentioned this some, I don't hear much discussion about it, but we have needs also in our general operating account, which is our largest operating account. I certainly know we have them in the street, but I think we would be amiss if we, if we pass the sales tax and we don't put some portion for public safety, police, fire, you know, we just heard from our director that we need a, a permit location for them and um, had several discussions with our fire chief um, that there's going to be a need for, you know, we've got some property and expansion in the fire department. I, I would hate to see us not at least have an eighth or something that is is part of this that can go besides just streets. I mean, we need the streets. There's no doubt. I mean, we could use two or three percent. But we also, as, as Alderman, a council member um, Harmon just mentioned, you know, we've had a decrease. Our general fund is flat. And uh, there's no, there's not going to be any relief for our general fund as a result of a, if a sales tax is passed for the street fund, um, unless there's some way that we can work something out from some of the public funds that comes out of the general budget. So, is is that possible? I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to be a, a something that the council is interested in, but um, please. That doesn't mean it might not end up going for streets, but I just hate to see it, um, especially at a time we're so flat in our general funds. 
Mayor Young, members of the council, my name is Bill Spivey. I'm here at your convenience and your pleasure. Um, part of what investing with Steve we tried to do tonight simply present options. Subject to, and I, I think Steve may have shared an email that I sent him with about different things that we discussed. What are the purposes? How many taxes? If you did a general sales tax, let's just lay aside the question of bonds or pay as you go from. <clears throat> let's say if you did a general sales tax for a number of different purposes specified in your ordinance with the official. That's a tax. That's one tax. A bond issue is another tax. If you did a separate tax to support the street fund, that's a third tax. Can't say we're gonna do any tax <clears throat> and you know vote on a bunch of if we're gonna put it in the general fund and say it's used for any lawful purpose, then clearly you can do that. And it's a one cent tax that then you can spend for the needs of the city that you would typically spend of the general fund. Now, if you're going to do a bond tax, we have to do that a little different. Or if you're going to do a tax with a sunset clause, and the language that we put in the sample ordinance we look at is one way to do it. There are other ways to do it. But if you're going to do that, that's a different kind of tax. So I think what would help us in helping you is kind of have it narrowed down to how many things you want to do, whether you want to vote on a single tax, it's going to be a general tax for general purposes, goes into the general fund, and then you all appropriate it as, a, as, as appropriate. If that's going to be what you do, as opposed to a separate bond tax, then you can draft the ordinance that way. I simply want to be available to help you all, once you figure out what it is you want to do, put that into a format that then you can then present to the voters for them to decide. Professor Jenkins at the law school used to always say, what I hear you saying then, yeah. Yeah. what I hear you saying then is that we can have an ordinance that says a quarter, a quarter percent of this sales tax goes to the general fund. And then if we want to steer a percent percentage of that to streets, we can, but we can't have an ordinance that says, We've got a quarter percent, and it's going to go to general fund and to streets and to parks well, and so to this, that, and the other thing. Or you can, you can but uh, there are a series of cases, and I'll speak to you as a lawyer in this sense, that uh, go back to how you do this, and there are different ways to do it. For instance, and not to use another city for this example, but and without naming city, what you can do is have a a certain percentage of the tax, whether it's an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, whatever. And you can specify by resolution how you want to spend that money before you ever vote on it. And then it's up to you all to adhere to what you say. You can put it in the ordinance if you want to, but once you put it in the ordinance and it's voted on, then that's what it's got to be spent for. Okay. If it goes into the general fund to be used for all lawful purposes, then it's money that's coming into the general fund, and you can, as needed, make appropriate use of that money. That, that's all I'm saying. Obviously, okay. in my experience, when you ask voters in the community to vote on tax, you want to tell them what's going to be used for. Yeah. As transparent so, as possible. Yeah, yeah, I, blink, yeah. I mean, it's some of both. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to evade the answer no, to the I think, No, I think, you, I think that makes sense. We and were I very restricted right, with our 1% sewer tax, and we were challenged sometimes along the way, and that wasn't, in, that wasn't the intent on how that ordinance was written, but we became very restricted on some things that sometimes maybe it would have been better if, if it hadn't. Have. And I think it's fair to say we're gun shy now when it comes to ballot titles and things of that nature. We're now very gun shy. Well, I, I personally, you know, you know, my, my intent, and I believe the intent of the street committee was to put something specific in front of the voters for uh, street improvements, capital street improvements, um, that that would not be a, a lifetime, uh, you know, tax that we, we carried out. And, you know, wh whether we, we used it to uh, secure bonds uh, that would allow us to do more work faster, um, or we did a, a pay-as-you-go with a sunset, um, you know, it's just a, a difference of, 
of, uh, of mindset, I guess, or, or a difference of, of what your, your, your thought is there. Uh, but I, I really believe that we, we have some very specific needs that um, if we try to be too non-committal, for lack of a better term, as to what we're going to spend the money on, then, then we're going to have a really hard time garnering support uh, for for what we need. And you know, if, if we water it down too much, and and um, then then we end up you know not really even having a, a, a fighting chance to, to get the improvements that are needed. Um, and, and that's that's my view and, and my opinion. If you look recently at the you know the success that Conway had on passing one for their streets. You know, the, the people turned out, they understood, we need this, this benefits us, this benefits our community and our potential growth. They come out to support that. I think when you just do big, general, it could go for anything, I think then we start having pushback of, you know, no more taxes and that type of thing. I don't, I don't hear the mayor saying big general, it goes for anything. And I don't, I don't think, uh, I didn't hear, I didn't, chief, you know, I'm not speak for, but I didn't, that's not what I heard. I, didn't hear I, I heard an eighth of opinion, like a portion of the quarter percent that we are talking about being permanent, a portion of that, a sliver of that being going to the general fund. Did, they, did, I, did I hear correctly? Yes, like and, and as, as he mentioned, it may be by resolution that it's appropriated. I mean, I think it'd be fair each year to decide where that money's going to go yeah. to if it's, you know. And and some of the and some of the things that she was talking about are real are real concerns that I've had for a while. And you've you've all heard me, you've all heard my sermon for eleven years now, going on twelve. That um, we have a non diversified right. revenue stream, and as the economy fluctuates, our revenue stream fluctuates, and we're we right now, it's like she said, it's flat. And, um, you know, there are things that, that are happening, like the, the our fire department. And uh, I think the chief's here tonight. I walk. I think I walked yep. in with him. The chief's here tonight. And he can tell you about our ISO classifications and the fact that our, uh, our fire stations are not centrally located for our fire district. And the fact that we're not centrally located for our fire district is very soon, if we don't do something about it, going to start affecting people's pocketbooks. Because our ISO classification, we're not going to continue to be an ISO class 2. We're going to end up as an ISO class 3. We're going to lose that ISO class 2 certification. And then people, you know, it's going to affect people's pocketbooks where they're paying their uh, insurance premiums. And when it affects their insurance premiums, it affects their house payments and things of this nature. And that's just one aspect. And there are other things that we need to be looking at in the future and that these are, you know, rather large expenditures. And uh, one of the things that I was looking at tonight, I had asked um, Brian for a copy of his expenditure report. And I like seeing this uh, land for public works, $200,000 to move it out. That's a good, that's a good idea. That's an excellent idea. Move public works out north, expand public works. And that gives, uh, that gives, uh, 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 animal services room for expansion and uh, others room for expansion. They got to have a building when they get out there. Yeah, and we got to have a building when they get out there. And I mean, these are these are large, these are high dollar things, and these are things that won't come under that street. So yeah, I can see, I see where the mayor's coming from, and I'm, you know, I'm concerned yes. about our flat revenue stream and our undiversified revenue stream. I'm gonna, and, excuse me, I thought you stopped. But uh, that's that's basically what I want to say. I appreciate what you, you, Leanne, you guys sent us this afternoon. I, I, I studied it before I got here, but I'm looking at it again right now. Um, I apologize having this open, but it's the only way, since I don't have a hard copy of it. You know, if you look at cities our size in the greater, what, 50 mile radius around here, you know, w ourselves and Maumel are the only cities that have only a 1% in Alaska County. Cities. Okay. The only cities that have 1% city tax. Okay, um, everyone else is, you know, Bryant, Cabot, they're two and a half to three percent city tax to, to do what we're trying to do. We're trying to do, do the same things that those individuals are doing in their cities. And you ha you can't compare us to Little Rock. They have a bigger population. They can charge less tax because they you multiply it by many more people. But the piece is, is that just to go up, I mean, our proposal that you worked up for us on, on these sample ordinances were a half was a, a quarter percent sales tax up to seven, um, 
three quarters percent sales tax, right? Right. You didn't do anything more than that. Even if we if we even went to one percent, adding it, I mean Mayflower is at two percent, Cabot's at two percent, you know Conway's at over two percent, Carlisle's over two. I mean Car Lone Oak is three percent. I mean those areas are much smaller communities, but there's no one except us and Maumel that are at one percent. And they um, have some village there. And they have some village. And some city so, fees. So the, the piece is, if we just made it 1%, you could do your 75% of that towards, I mean, we, you could make, you know, for what you're trying to do, and still have the growth of the fire department, the police department, the MEMS program, and have those other emergency, we might just say emergency services improvements or enhancements. And make it, but I'm totally, Kevin, with you guys, that the focus for me is streets. It's got to be the majority of it. It's got to be the critical part. But I think that from having said in the budget session and listening to Brian and some of the things that need, every time we have to hire a new officer, it's twenty-five thousand dollars just for the training. So if we hire four new officers, that's a half. That's you know that's hundred thousand dollars right there. So, and we need at least four. So. I'd like to make a, uh, a little analogy here about this because been on the budget and been on city council since twenty ten and, and our income level uh, for our city has not grown, but our city has grown. Mm -hmm. So the analogy to look at is like a family that gets started with one child, and over a period of 10 years, they have nine more kids, but they're still just making $8.50 an hour. It's hard to function. It's hard to do that, and so our city is in that quandary where we're not making the, the, the income levels are not going up for the services that we need to provide, but yet we've expanded to Gravel Ridge. We have another 800 and some odd dwelling places going out on Oakdale. Our city is growing a lot faster than the income is coming in, and we can't keep up at this rate. We're, we're dropping behind very quickly. When she says we're flat, we are flat. Um, I would be certainly in favor of the uh, three-quarter percent sales tax for our streets because that's the big issue in our city is our streets, our drainage, uh, things that we're dealing with. Uh, but the quarter percent, I think I would be very much in favor um, of allocating that to the general fund. Um, I mean, we can put whatever you want to put on it, resolutions, whatever, but I really think a quarter percent of the general fund is going to go where it needs to go, and that's to our police, our fire, uh, our other services in our city that we have that we have to maintain. We don't have an option on this. So I, I would be very much in favor of a three-quarter percent plus a quarter percent. Did not North Little Rock do that? Then they put a permanent quarter percent in, or was a half a cent? Okay. So uh, on a permanent basis. Uh, I'm not... I'm not against that. I think we could put some type of permanent tax on there to maintain our city uh, structure and the uh, three quarter percent that we've talked about, Kevin, in street committee uh, could be an eight year sunset type thing, be a bond issue. I wanted to ask Bill a question about the- We did the, both, excuse me, Kim, it's a half percent for permanent and a half right, percent for the streets. Right. I want to ask Bill a question about this because it's it's been bugging me since we talked about it. Is the time issue on a bond issue. We keep talking about a three year time frame. So if we pass a bond issue for $5 million, then it has to be spent in that three year time frame. Is that correct? It needs to be spent or committed to be spent. 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 Encumbered. And obviously, the, the fed, this is a federal rule, federal regulation, <laughs> not a state law. But the federal government wants you to going to borrow, spend those monies within a reasonably short period of time. Now, as you can imagine, in bond issues that we see, there's a good bit of hair splitting that goes on. I think what typically happens is I get a call from a city, we're down to the last six months, contractor hasn't finished. Contractors been working diligently. Maybe we had rain delays. Maybe there was some approval that couldn't come through in time. For reasonable cause shown, we can extend that for another 24 months. But there has to have been diligence on the part of the city to try and spend it. One of the things I think I visited with you all about the workshop was if you were to do a bond issue, or if you did a bond issue you know, what is your reasonable expectation in terms of how quickly you can absorb, which is another word for spend, which includes 
planning and designing contractors this money. So obviously, you don't want to borrow a bunch of money, get to the end of three years and have a bunch of unspent money because you didn't know which way to go. It takes very intentional planning and spending. But if you work diligently and you've gone out there and you've lined up the contractors, notwithstanding your best efforts, there have been some things that have prevented you from fully completing that. Came to us and said, can we get an extension? There are some rules which allow for that. So I don't think, I, the reason we mentioned the three year deal is <clears throat> we want people to take this seriously. We want to understand that if the IRS were to come in and take a look, they want to make sure that you've been proceeding in good faith. But that doesn't mean that there aren't allowances that can be paid for unforeseen circumstances. Now, I think one of the things we talked about at Street Committee is that we really don't have anything shovel ready at this point. Am I right? Maryland. It's Maryland. That's correct. So could we, as kind of pushing forward, kind of solidify this is, this is what we've decided we're going to do, priority in terms of, you know, we can do another workshop or whatever to solidify in terms of the list. That would help so we don't have a lot of wishy-washy out there in terms of, well, which projects it's going to do, are we going to do, and so forth. So if we, we, if we have, okay, this is what we're going to do, X, Y, Z, you know, then we can get on to that a whole lot faster to meet those deadlines instead of spending months and months and months trying to decide which way we were going to go. The, the other thing I'm, I wanted to find out. I know that we've got a tremendous need in terms of, as we've talked about, fire. I mean, we've got big areas of the city that are not properly covered. And I know when I talk to the fire chief, it's not just one we're talking. We're covered right now. I don't want to scare anybody. No, but I mean in terms of our ISO. If that, it wouldn't be an ISO too. Right. That covered. If, if they looked at it right now, we wouldn't meet those standards. So we're not just talking one new fire station. We're talking about multiple in order to get all these areas covered. So what would be the options in terms of if everything goes into, not everything, but the, the quarter cent, if it goes into that, can we then bond out any percentage of that to do quick projects? Because it's not like we can wait 10 years to build these things. Sure. Yeah, I mean, again, that could be part of the planning process. Is that something that has to go then again to the voters, or is that something we can handle on a council level? Now, all right, I guess you're talking about doing a general sales tax and then bonding part of that? Yes. Correct. So say we have, have the need that... It. Before you did a bond issue, it would have to be voted on. Wouldn't it be then part of the sales tax vote, the same thing to bond it at that yeah. time? Depends on how you did it. Depends on how you did it. you want to use one of the streets that the building the fire station, those items have to Yes, but those are two separate purposes. So that's some more information we need to find out in terms of in working with the fire chief. What what would be the commitment in terms of that, and is that something that needs to be done this way, or can it be just done through general monies? I don't know. Right, and, and I don't know either. And, and generally speaking, if there were some things that you could get more money for sooner than you would if you were collecting, that certainly plan in advance. Every time you vote on a separate tag or a separate project, it's a different ballot. So part of this is managing how you present this to your constituents. Gotcha. In the work, I think in the uh, workshop that, or not the workshop, sorry, the materials that Leanne worked up, she also provided you with a schedule of how things come about. Now. I think, and this is the dynamic situation, I'm, we're not here pushing you all to do anything next week, but you've got to call the election, and there's a period of time before you can hold the election. And once the election is held, assuming it's approved, then there's another period of time before that tax can actually begin to be collected. So at the time you adopt an ordinance setting a special election, we can project for you with reasonable accuracy how soon it would be before the money started coming in from that tax. That certainly would give you time to do some of this planning. But you'd have to know when you went to the voters exactly what you wanted to do. 
on a one cent general sales tax, you don't put in your general fund and use for all appropriate legal purposes and you all appropriate it. If you wanted to tax, which totals a penny, but might be an eighth for one purpose, a quarter for something else, and the rest for something else that each one's voted on as a separate item. I can show you how it's done, but I can't make I, I don't mean to be condescending to you. I can't do that or make those decisions for you. But all of the options that we were discussing, the questions are all good. The good thing is you've got options for how you present this. Bill, I wanted to ask you that some research I was doing in terms of how you schedule the election. Is it am I correct that, that from the time an ordinance is passed calling for the election, if there has to be like a 120 day window <clears throat> the election has to occur yeah this gets confusing there two there's a window within with the ordinance which would the election is supposed to occur which is, i think is 120 days right. and that's so that you know if you don't vote on it then you just put it off and put it off and put it off <clears throat> on the other hand there are also some notices if you want to do a special election you've got to give your election commission your county clerk at least 60 days notice before the date of that election which is not hard to do unless you're going to time it to coincide with a primary which is next may or you do it during a general election in those cases you have to give them 70 days at the time now this has come up recently in a, another community and and there's a discussion back and forth because of whether they want to do a special election or whether they want to want to wait until the primary next May. And in that particular situation, cost was a consideration. Um, they have a separate committee, which I'm told is raising money to pay for the election, so the city is not out of money. Um, I believe if it's done in coincident with the primary and the general election, they pay for it. So there is some consideration there but you're absolutely right there are some time frames that have to be considered when does the uh, clock start ticking once everything's been done it passes we're ready to go and say we do the bond issue just saying we do um, so when does the clock start ticking on that three-year period okay that's called the issue date okay from the time of the election that it passes to we do that is there a time frame uh, Yes, but principally, and I'm going to ask you to go back and look at the materials that Leanne produced. I mm -hmm. think in the context of this conversation, her materials are going to make a lot more sense than the right. made the workshop. Right. There are deadlines that have to be adhered to to start the tax. So, to adopt the ordinance, you know, you've got to have at least 60 or 70 days, depending on timing, before you can have that election. And if you're getting ready to have an election, my first advice would be somebody go talk to the election commission. Find out, you know, if a particular date that you've got in mind is going to be a problem or, you know, they like to know these things because sometimes more than one community schedules an election on the same day. And it puts a, a burden of stress on them to get everybody trained, et cetera, and so forth. So you have the election. Election commission certifies the results of the election within 10 days, whether you win or lose. Mayor's proclamation gets published once the election results have been certified. If someone's going to challenge the results, they have to do so within 30 days after the mayor's proclamation is published. But meanwhile, you send the ordinances levying the tax, the mayor's proclamation to the state. The state has a rule that you must give them 90 days notice before the tax can commence and they will only commence collection of a tax on the first day of a calendar quarter. So let's say that today, September. let's say we had a special election in November, uh, which would have been on the 14th. That was the second Tuesday. And you got all the material and everything to the state by November 30th. All right? 90 days would be somewhere around the 1st of uh, February or so, 1st of March. But that's not the first day of a calendar quarter. So if you get notice to them before December 31st, the first day that tax can start is April 1. So there are some time frames built in. Now, what you, I think, you don't, don't want to do is you don't want to be out there collecting tax too long 
before you know what you're going to do. So if you've done it, you're going to do it. The bond issue is a separate ordinance. Once the tax is approved, and assuming you want to move full speed ahead, then you go through all the certification processes, the proclamation, you get it to the state, you get confirmation from the state when that tax is going to start. At that, that point, Ann does her work and comes in and advises you as to what the market looks like, um, what the rates are likely to be. <clears throat> we will have put a maximum amount, if it's a bond issue, for each purpose in the ordinance. We can't issue any more bonds than that. But let's say we had a huge increase in interest rates. More of that money's got to pay, go to pay interest, the principal's going to come down some. May not be able to borrow as much as it's been authorized. And so you have a you have some market risk the longer you go, uh, that your interest costs will be greater than they would be. Now, I know you all know we've been, we've been in a period of historically low interest, certainly in my lifetime. I lived through the late 70s and early 80s when interest rates went to 20%. Let's hope we never see that again. But this has been an advantageous time for municipal governments to borrow money from the standpoint of cost. Interest cost has been up. So once you figured out how much you can borrow, put together a second ordinance, come back and present it and say, here's how much you can afford to borrow for each of these purposes. You authorize the ordinance, publish the ordinance, and go forward. And just as you've done with the P bonds and the library bonds, close within 30 to 45, well, about 45 days after. So there are a lot of different time frames depending on what plane you're on in this process. Wow. Just at the back of the envelope calculation, if you held an election in May, the tax levy would probably begin in October, and you could have project funds in December. That's the May primary? That's correct. And when would we have to take our action to hold the, when would the latest we could take our action to hold the May, hold the election in the May primary? Backing up. Latest? Yes. Well, let me just back up if I can, Charlie. Uh, probably March. no later than your February, well, no, 70 days. Probably 70 days. You probably do it at your February meeting. I'd have to look at the calendar. Mm -mm. There would have to be That'd a 70-day uh -uh. notice. The primary is not on the first day of May. Exactly what it is. It's either the second or third Tuesday. This so it sounds like we've got basically three big questions, uh, three big things that we have to address bond or pay as you go, purpose for the tax, which now seems more in flux than it did before I came to the meeting tonight, and when to set the election. I think it sounds like the big, big three areas that we need to. We need to talk about. Um, I I still support bond. You heard my argument for purpose of the tax, and I do not want the election during. I do not think it's positive to have the election during the primary, but that's just my own thoughts. I don't know. I'd have to talk to you. you know, there's a lot of people smarter than me on uh, election. Uh, how elections work and don't work for taxes. But. I give advice on a lot of things. Politics is not one of them. <laughs> uh, I'm a visitor to your city. You all know far better than I do what's best. There are different schools of politics. I've never heard that a high turnout helps a tax election. I've never heard anybody tell me. <laughs> well, can we go around then and like find out? I've voiced mine. You have voiced yours. Mike? Or you, you know, we can just kind of go around and if we're going to move this forward. What question are you asking? Like what Charlie just brought up. Do you want to do the pay-as-you-go preference or are you on the bonding preference? Do you want to? Now, to me, like what Charlie was saying is diversify makes sense to me because, you know, your, your sales tax going up and down. So I'd probably be more leaning towards that way myself. Well, I have to admit, I'm I'm a little bit confused. I mean, we we've talked a whole bunch tonight, and, and good conversation. Um, you know, so our, our, one of the things that I've heard is that we want to leave the three quarter cent 
uh, as as a non permanent tax. You know, whether we you know go with a bond issue for street improvements or a pay as you go. So then, the the question as far as what is about the permanent quarter cent. Am I am I following the conversation right, or, or am I just all wet? I think you're right. I agree. You're not wet. I agree. Okay. So, I mean, so, so my, my personal view is, you know, I, I have no issue with the, the permanent tax, you know, mm. being a, a broader usage. Okay. That, that's really not a, a sticking point for me. The three quarter cent sales tax, you know, one of the things that concerns me is I don't want to kick that can so far down the road that my, you know, grandchildren are paying for what we're doing today. And, and that's a concern of mine. Um, so whether whether we went with a pay-as-you-go or we went with a, a bond issue, as long as we had sites and the intention of, of paying, you know, bond issues in a reasonable amount of time, you know, eight to ten years, then – you know, I think that's probably, you know, the, the best way to go, just in, in my opinion. Uh, that, that puts pressure on some other areas, okay, meaning that, you know, we, we've got to get projects. we got we got to get them shovel-ready. we got to get, in some cases, maybe even uh, land acquisition and, and things of that, you know, nature has got to get moving pretty fast. Uh, engineers, you know, ha have to be engaged quickly. Uh, in, in order, um, you know, w w once it passes, if it passes, then all that's got to happen pretty quick. Uh, or we end up going into a scenario that um, we've talked about where, where we're issuing a, a series of bonds. And, and quite honestly, you know, that, that's that's troublesome because, you know, those, those cost money. I mean, you know, we, we don't we don't issue bonds or it's not free to do that. Um, so. Uh, to, to issue bonds, we'd be better off, in my opinion, uh, with the taxpayer money, to, to issue one bond uh, as opposed to a series. Um, but then, you know, do we have the ability to spend that money within, you know, that a lot amount of time? Um, and that just really depends on, on how fast we can go, uh, how fast we can get uh, engineering done, get shovel ready, get work moving, and, um, you know, can I hear, am I hearing you say then of these four proposals that Bill gave us that item four, which is the one that talks about the 0.75 tax for streets, where you go back to the voters in eight years and say, look what we've done these last eight years, and we want to renew that bond issue for another eight years. Is that the one you're, is that what I'm hearing you say? So, you know, in, in my mind, there, there's potential for that. I mean, if you've spent the money well and you have more needs, um, then, then you could potentially go back to voters and, and ask to extend, you know, beyond that. Um, and, and it would be, again, you know, the taxpayer's choice, you know, to determine, hey, yes, they agreed with how you spent the money and whether they wanted to, to, to re-up for those bonds. I mean, you know, that, that's certainly uh, a potential outcome, absolutely. You know, I, on, back on the, uh, the, the bond issue, I, I had reservations about that, about the three years, and, and I still do, but, I'm more at ease now knowing that, that if, if we come down to it, we could file a two-year extension on that, which would bring us out to five years. Because since we don't have things shovel-ready, it takes a while to engineer all that. We, we, don't, we know what we want to do, but we don't know exactly how we're going to do it. So we, ha we have to have the engineers going there, and it takes time to do all that. Well, I don't know that... We know exactly yet what what we all want to do. We've got a list. It's, it's, What's the street committee for? Yeah, that's we, the list is out there. It's and you've all seen the list. And she's talking about the order of the list. I think. Right, but right, but I thought we were also getting some information that was supposed to be presented to us, kind of showing us some different options in terms of that because well the options are um, to get, get them all done well, no <laughs> for I know. years no. that's the option okay for example <laughs> there uh, you know a huge huge chunk of it was to redo all of country club and then it was like you know as it was explained well okay here are going to be the results if you do that and then then it was like at the street committee well, I'm not so sure those were the results we were looking for. So it was on the list, but did that really make sense for everything? 
perhaps not, but we haven't really discussed all that at the council level. Well, initially on, on, on Country Club, we'll start talking about Country Club. Initially, it was supposed to be widened. We did the, the traffic counts. We, we, we looked at the traffic counts. It doesn't need to be widened, but we do need to do curb and, curb and gutter on that and, and some sidewalk issues. That's that's what we need to do. Besides that, it's an older road. You you, you start widening things up, you're gonna you're gonna upset a lot of the uh, constituents there on that road. I'm not because, sure you're gonna upset them. I think they're the ones asking for that yeah. stuff. Well, but but once again, Beverly, because not everybody was privy to the information at the the street committee. I wasn't at the street committee. committee. I learned it right here. Well, but they talked about if you widen it straight like that, now you're going to affect the pedestrian, the people who are now trying to cross that street, kids and everything else in terms of getting around on that. The, your traffic's going to go a lot faster on that street. There are all sorts of repercussions. And once again, is that worth spending, what, a fourth of the entire budget on when we had all these other needs? I mean, that's – I just want to make sure because, like I said – I would say perhaps there's a consensus, but then you may feel otherwise. So I just want to make sure that we're organized and that we all have a strong, yes, this is what we need to do, and this is why, and this is why these streets need to be done, so that when we talk to the public, we're giving them correct information. Well, I have to be honest. The minutes of the street committee meeting gave me pause about the whole I want to move forward with the sales tax election, but the minutes of the street committee meeting gave me pause about moving forward. The minutes of the street committee meeting made me think, do we have our cart before our horse? Are we moving too quickly? Um, should we be, should we be finalizing our list? Should we be trying to get more things shovel ready and at the same time moving a little more slowly and doing more research into what's the best way to do it while we're uh, while we're finalizing this list, while we're working on projects? And I don't, I wasn't as worried about the list. I'm, my, my concern is not so much about the list. Um, I have faith, I have faith in the street committee for that. Uh, you know, they don't. Uh, you, you don't. Oh, come on, and bother me at Parks and Rec. I'm on by your streets. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm seriously. I'm, I, I review the list, and you know, I have faith in you at streets. And 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 you know, if you make a recommendation to me, I'm going to review it. And uh, uh, chances are that I'm. Uh, I may have some questions, but um, seriously though, uh, I'm not as concerned about the list as I am the fact that we didn't have any street. I mean, these shovel ready projects. Cost a lot of money to get shovel ready. That's what I was, and that, that, but then that was the flip side of it. Part of the, By the time I got here tonight, I started thinking, okay. is that not something we need the money for? But engineers, and the but that can be part of the, the, the sales tax pays those expenses. We yeah. spent hundreds of thousands of dollars getting Maryland Avenue ready, uh, right away acquisition and engineering. And But I think that's common um, for part of the those costs to be included in the sales tax. What, what you typically you write do, it that way. <clears throat> what you typically do is once you plan to move forward, we prepare and present what's called a resolution evidencing your official intent to move forward. That signals the day that you have a capital program. From that day, you can go back 60 days and pick up any expenses you've incurred for those purposes to reimburse yourself out of the presence of the bond issue. You can't do this. You can't pay for something. Have a bond issue. Approve the tax for the bond issue. You can't spend the tax proceeds for something and then do the bond issue. If they're approved for the bond issue, they can only be spent to pay right. principal and interest on the bond. Right. So if you have a pay as you go, you would use those funds to pay for expenses as the money became available. There's a difference. So, I mean, Charlie, I think you, you've you've hit one of the nails anyway right on the head, and, and that's the fact that, you know, in, in order to get shovel ready, to get engineering done, to get right of way um, uh, obtained, I mean, it does take money, and it's, it's money that we, we just don't have today. So, the, the again, the intent and expectation was that, you know, we're able to move forward, you know, after the passage of, 
uh, of a tax worse. We, we just we just can't today. I mean, we just don't have the money. That's simply where we are now. The the other the other thing, and and you know, Mary Jo, you're you're very you know right too. I mean, you know, country club was a big topic of conversation. Uh, I think we've got some some known uh, projects that, that that change a little bit. They change from a widening to a um, you know, improvement and, and hey and that's um, and that, that's the nature of, of, of what we do okay um, so I, I get real hesitant about saying specifically that you know he, here's the the roads that I'm going to improve and th this is the list this is the only list this is it this is everything um, because you know as we know um, you know our, our tie-in to 67 167 up here at Brockington uh, that's got to have some work done. Uh, it's, it's something's got to happen. We don't even know what that something is yet, or you know, really have a, a vision as to what that's going to take. Uh, we're, we're probably several years down the road from even you know understanding you know what that would look like. Now, what we do know is that there are some other ways that we can maybe you know divert some traffic if if we you know punch, punch a road through in a specific area that would you know take. Uh, take some of that traffic and, and move it further south on 67 and, and, and join in there at a, at a you know a different point. Um, you know that's going to move some traffic. But you know again, to, to say that I intend to spend X number of dollars on uh, Rockington and, and where it joins into 67 167, we, we're just we're just not there, and, and we're not going to be there for. You know, I want to say a year or two. A year There's two. a lot of conversation. Let me ask, let me ask you a question, Mr. Spivey. If, if we took and let's say we took, because right now the problem we're we're not shovel ready. We don't we, we don't have we don't we don't have anything engineered. Could we Maryland, right? I mean, on it on all of these projects except Maryland. Maryland, except Maryland. Could we not take and take money out of our reserves? Reimburse and reimburse ourselves out of the reserves. We do it the right way. Well, let me ask a question, and it goes along with this. Then, well, if we, if we, Kevin, because we talked right. about this, we we don't even have our mindset on the ordinance yet. So, if we get the mindset on the ordinance, and we kind of clarify what we want to do in the ordinance, okay, can we go ahead and start collecting? Say we do a, a sales tax without the bond issue and start collecting the sales tax money and then come in and do a bond issue. Have You'd have to vote on it. You have to have another election. It's kind of like the A&P tax. We had to have a special election. We didn't do a special election. We held it on the election day. But it had to be an election. Even though we were already collecting the tax, we were having to have an election into how that tax was going to be spent. So it's similar, and would be similar in that way. It takes a vote of the people to approve a pledge of tax for a debt. Okay. But you can do it in one vote if you word the ballot correctly. And do what? Have the election, if you know how what how it's how I, how it's going to be itemized in the election ordinance, with bond. Ordinance, sample ordinance number three. That's approach. right. Approach. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do the two votes like A and P did if you do it like one of these proposals you gave us. That's correct. Now, okay. A and P is a different situation, They've but they always have tax. been. Tax was already existing. We were just and they and they already done one bond issue in the past. Right. So right. this was coming back and using that tax. There, the tax there works a little differently than what you're talking. About. But wouldn't it be the same if we was do, did a uh, pay as you go, and then we realize that we we've got something, then we go back. And do just like the A and P did. Not, not if you had an eight-year sunset on it. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. It's, it, I guess the three years concerns me. It concerned me. It's always concerns me because three years goes very. Fast. We're a year beyond the A and P tax. Right. And so that very much is a concern to me. The fact that we may have the two-year period behind that still concerns me because we're not talking about a few. Projects we're talking about major street improvements, exactly. major projects, and I I'm just watching going out on 67, watching the Jacksonville situation that's been going on for years, 
And you don't know what kind of problems you're going to run into. You don't. That part's what scares me. I do. I do think we need to do the bond issue because if we pay as we go, it could also be a very lengthy process. And I think I've been on the council since 2004, and our budget really hasn't changed that much since 2004. Not a whole lot. But when I got on the council, Miller's Crossing only had about five streets. Now there's about ten phases. And so that as Tim, as Alderman or Council Member McMinn said, our revenues are flat. Our city has grown tremendously. We just can't support ourselves with the way we've been going. We've got to do something. We need to act on and do something. Well, it's not, it's not only that, but at some point, if we don't fix our street situation and so forth um, and these other things, then we will stop growing. That's right. As people will move out. I really like uh, Council Member Keplinger's idea about perhaps using reserves to start getting some engineering done so that we can speed up this process and then look at a potential reimbursement. And I don't think that that's a lose-lose, even if it doesn't go through. We have a much better chance of down the line being able to qualify for different programs if we have shovel-ready projects through Metro Plan and so forth. So I don't think we're losing anything by taking those steps. No, I mean, that's a requirement for grants as well. Uh, uh, oftentimes, is that you, the project be shovel-ready. So, We've yeah. talked about this as municipal league for years because when we started the new highway tax, that was preached to us to have stuff shovel-ready. And so in preparation for anything else, we need to have these two to three projects shovel ready at least at a time. Can I ask you a question? Um, I hate to name cities, but the city of North Little Rock just recently passed a tax. Did they, are they going to bond that or are they? Oh. I think, too, uh, one of the things that we really need to consider in the ordinance, or as the ordinance, a part of this ordinance, it needs to be simple. The more difficult you make it for the citizens, the less chance you are you're going to get it passed. That's why I think the three-quarter percent plus the quarter percent is the simplest approach to it. Whether we do bond or whether we do the other, it's got to be something simple that they're not trying to sit there, well, an eighth for this or a fourth for this. Uh, that's so confusing when you're in a ballot box because you're under pressure to hurry up and get done anyhow. So I think we need to make it as simple as we can. And I like the, the, the quarter, per, or I mean, yeah, the quarter percent permanent tax, permanent tax for the general fund, the three quarter for the street at, at eight year bond issue or whatever bond issue we do on that. If we do bond issue, uh, it's just imperative that we make it simple for the folks out there that are going to vote on it. And no offense Period. to North Little Rock, but I mean, our needs are different than North Little Rock's, which are different than Jacksonville, which They're are different, you know, so I think we have a need in that we are a developing well, we community, can. whereas North Little Rock is landlocked. And so, you know, they don't need to build streets like we need to build streets. They need to do other things that are important to North Little Rock. So we're way I think bonding is important. We're way behind. Tremendously behind. Kevin? I like this sheet. You too. That's what I was referring to. So, Thank you. perhaps next month we can. Did you want to think this over, this or do you want to do a workshop in December, Kevin? Or? Well, my, my, my interest is moving forward, okay? There's been really, really good conversation this, this evening. Uh, I, you know, in, in all honesty, uh, like I said, we we brought this up to council in in, in April or May, and, and we've we've had other things that were were, were more pressing that, that, that we needed for the city, um, and, and and now we're just at a point where again it, it's time to uh, make a decision on, on the direction the council wants to go. Uh, I, I've had uh, some say, well, what what is the street committee, you know, uh, what direction does the street committee want to move or what have you, and I think the street committee has has made a recommendation and really it's um it's going to be up to this this council to decide you know what direction we move forward in um so 
you know, Steve, you I mean you and I had, had traded some phone calls and emails and um, I think there was, you know, something that had to be approved by the DFNA before it was, you know, put on our agenda as an ordinance and um, you know, I don't know that I fully understand all of those piece parts, but you know, I, I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to move forward with whatever the will of the council is. I think the um, the street improvements can be you know done w with a bond issue or with a pay as you go. We'll, we'll figure out how to make that work uh, e either way. I, we, I'm just ready to move. <laughs> uh, lack of action is, is really not. Uh, that shouldn't be an option. Is a um, what is needed to be able to use reserves in order to start getting? Do we need to determine some shovel-ready projects to move forward on that? We would just have to, you know, budget money out of 2018 to do that. No, street. So we've got to identify what we're going to, you know, we don't need. Is I don't think we would need to do them all. No, there, but, but I mean, at least we could get moving. Talk to her anyway. So maybe next, after y'all meet with street committee, could, I, I could we talk about this that the next month? With the Maryland project, you know, um, and we may have some of that on Country Club also. We had to have some major utilities moved. And until we had that commitment, until Metro Plan approved, we got our project approved, you know, other entities, as, as, as North Rock Electric and CW, they could not afford to put those funds in their budget until they knew we were going to move forward. So, um, you know, I don't know how much we want to spend until we get a sales tax passed because um, we're still not going to be able to get them to do some of the things that, that is required. It, as it is now, it's going to be the end of June before CAW can commit to have their utility work, and we, we've worked with them for several years. Now, that doesn't mean there's not some things we don't need to, to do some engineering on. I think we do. But, um, Kevin, are y'all meeting in December at the street committee? We, we certainly plan to, um, but I mean, if I'm carrying something back to the street committee, I, I'll, I want something very precise, very specific. Um, I, I don't want to just, hey, go go cuss about it at the street committee meeting again and, and bring back whatever you come up with. I mean, I, I think, again, the street committee has presented a proposal to this council. Um, and and if, if we're going to go back to the street committee, then I, I want to know exactly what it is that you guys want us to look at review, and then I'll know who I need to contact and get pulled in. I come back to my three questions. You know, we've got to decide, do we want to do bond or pay as you go? I mean, what do we want to do? Do we want well, to do a poll? Well, I, 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 I think the bond issue is really the way to go. I mean, we really don't have much much choice because we want to get this stuff done. It's, it's like, like he says, we want to fish or cut bait. You know, we we, we got to get, get moving along. And, and if, if we look at that, we're looking at a year before we were going to get any money. If we could go ahead and and plan on a bond issue, take reserve, take some reserves, take some more reserves, start working on our engineering, get that stuff ready. Then we were actually so that'd be three years. If we had to file an extension, that's another two years. Plus, we'd be a year ahead, so that's six years. That we're looking, counting, start, or starting right away at, in January. Go ahead. Is a, that uh, sense? Is that a motion? He's got some. No, I. Can I make a couple of observations and perhaps hopefully help with one? I'd like to <clears throat> recommend that we prepare and send over to Mr. Cobb a form of a resolution that you could put on your agenda for next month, evidencing your intent to move forward with the capital program. It doesn't commit you to anything, but it is a marker as of the date and time that you're looking at doing a capital program. There is, there are some rules about how soon you need to move forward, but it's like 18, 36 months after that. But at least as of that date, you've, you know, you've put a, put a, a marker down and, and it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't hurt you to go ahead and do that. Second, the procedure we're talking about is a number of years ago when we first started doing sales taxes, people were just drafting ordinances all over the place. Some of these things would come to the state, which is the collector of these taxes, and they monitor it, and they didn't, they didn't understand the ordinance. So the legislature in its wisdom provided that before you can approve a tax, the FNA has to sign off on the form of that ordinance. And so the ordinance has to be in substantially final form, and I would say final form, when we bring it for you to, to adopt, you can't come in 
and as we talked about tonight, discuss it, and then at the end of the night say, well, let's do it this way and change something. They got to know in advance. They got to sign off in advance. That's just the law. It's it's an easy way. I'd also like to just listening to you tonight suggest that you work into your thoughts of an idea. Lee and I are kind of talking about this. It's possible because you have some projects that are ready, you can come up with a package of projects, and you can come up with a budget which includes not only financing the projects you can do today, but build into it money for design of future projects. So that your budget is not one that you've got to spend on building everything today. You build into the first series of bonds costs to cover the projects that you can do immediately and additional money that you can use to either reimburse yourself if you borrowed from your reserves or to pay professionals to help you plan these other projects and then come back with a second series of bonds to fund the actual construction. Now, I don't know enough about the projects to know if this will work, but it's certainly an option I think that's worth your time to explore. And it might solve some of the particular issues you've been talking about tonight and the apprehension to understand the reveal about the rules for how quickly you've got to spend this money. I would also say, you know, you're not alone. There's not a city that does this, that doesn't have these conversations. And they, they have to consider how quickly we're going to get this done. Some are more or less ready than you all are. So your quandary is not unique. This is something that we see a lot with our customers and our clients. But I do think that there's enough information here tonight about your concerns we can work with the street committee and maybe come back with a more appropriate proposal if we can do that. Uh, if I'm not ducked up in the night, y'all meet and, uh, <laughs> and, and and try to put something together. If that's And that's just an observation and a suggestion. Can I uh, uh, ask a question here? Would a motion be in order at this point? It's just no, a two. I don't think so. to commit. No, not to commit, but to reword reword the uh, ordinance that we have, like this ordinance number three, and uh, include the uh, quarter percent. Or, is that what you're offering to do? We don't need. You need to know what we want to do. Yeah, and, That's and right. I think, you know, with all due respect to the street committee, I think we need to talk with them because, you know, I don't know what these projects are. As so, I, I think I mentioned last time some are streets and drainage. Mm -hmm. Some are streets. There may be some separate drainage projects. So in terms of staging the bond issue, you're going to have to figure out exactly what projects because if you got two questions here, that's two separate projects. But I think when we're talking about the bond issue, we're talking about the three quarters. Of the yes. Commit. We're not talking about the one quarter. Right. That's right. It's, let me tell you, but we don't, the one quarter is the simplest thing I can do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rewording the one quarter is the simplest right. thing I can do. But I think we, we don't have anything in front of us that says that that's what we want to do. We didn't come in. We were talking about the three quarters. Yeah. But I think, but, yeah, and I think this, is we need to give him, we've got, at some point, this body of eight has got to get a consensus of what it wants to do, and I think that's what I hear him saying he wants to know. He wants to know what this body of eight wants right. to do. What, what I heard Kevin say is that all, that I'm hearing from your committee, from your notes, that y'all wanted the three-quarter percent. That's what I'm hearing, and I saw in your Correct. minutes, okay? So I think going to that half is, is a moot point for us, that, that, that the three-quarters is, is what, or even the quarter percent, that you know, you've got your list of projects, so... It seems from just every conversation, I haven't heard anybody on the council, any of the eight of us say, I only think we ought to go for a quarter. I didn't hear that from anybody's mouth. Mm -hmm. But I did have heard consistently since the mayor brought it up that we tend to have a, 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 a consensus possibly that we support having a permanent quarter tax on that sales tax. Can we kind of get a so, – so he'll know how to draw some of this up? I'm trying to help you, Bill. Shoot, I ain't drawing Okay. I think so, that's where Tim was going. That's, that's where I was going. going. So yeah. is, that, yeah. is that our straw bow here? I mean, can we – That's one of them. That's one of them. Can somebody speak instant now or forever hold your peace as you got married to it? Is anybody against the bonding issue is versus pay-as-you-go? 
I'm concerned about the bond, but I don't have. I'm, I'm, I've got concerns. I'm not against it, but I want. I just want to voice my concerns, and I've I'm done that. I would like to ask our attorney: Would you carry this forward to, and instead of everybody trying to propose something, would you lead this? Well, if the consensus is drafting of an ordinance that is as 75.75, that's going to support bonds. If I heard you correctly on that, that's correct. Yes, and. That's going to be permanent, but no to general, general fund. So that's general fund. That's not going to be bond. Then I think what I understand what you're probably saying is, in order to draft an ordinance that will be final form ordinance that would need to go to the PFA, then we need to identify projects. But I think he was talking about coming to the street committee. Well, we don't have to identify specific projects, no. but I do think the street committee has to figure out what the package is because we've got to figure out what you can afford. And we'll have to figure out which is a function of wherever the market is, what the interest rates is, what you what you have to borrow. So if you can't do it all in one bite, you might do it in two bites. And that's that, I was going to throw that concern out that, that Leanne and her experts are going to have to do some crunching for us now rather than after later. The yeah. way the question would be proposed is X amount of dollars for street projects be issued in one or more series of bonds from time to time. So it would be at your planning how you actually borrowed that money. And of course, a function of that is how quickly you can make the commitment to borrow the project. Let me add, there would be a maximum dollar amount. So even though you say multiple series, it's not like you're given an open authorization to issue bonds all day long. It might be 30 million. That number's been thrown out. And so if you only needed 10 million today, you would issue bonds for 10 million and 100% of that bond tax would go to pay down those bonds. And I think I mentioned before, I have a client who's, they really weren't ready for phase two, but those first bonds are about to be paid off. Well, that tax has nowhere to go except terminate if they don't issue more bonds. But they're limited to that maximum amount that's in that ordinance. So that, that helps if the voter knows that they're not just giving you an open checkbook. Does that make sense? I think we could work with uh, Alderman Lilly and the street to come up with, say, an initial series consist of those projects with the most work together with the budget planning for additional projects. It's uh, just a suggestion. I like the phasing in phases i just I, I just think we need to go ahead and and agree amongst ourselves that that's what it's going to take to allow for the quarter percent permanent and the three quarter percent for street do we have to word the bond i guess we do we'd have to word it as a bond issue yeah you do and, and but i have my concerns about it but i i, I know we need to get started so well, what you're talking about though are refinements of some of the sample ordinances that are for you Right. Obviously, the bond issue ordinance and the pay as you go three quarter cents are mutually exclusive. You can't do them both. Right. So yeah. if you choose to go with ordinances one, two, and three, four and five are out. Let, let, let me let me see if I got this thing figured out. With my little simple mind here. So and I said I said I said that. But uh, so so if we have an ordinance next next month. To get, get the progress going, if the street committee, we, we figure out a, a real list of what we want, so we could we could have money or, or ha and figure out how much money we, we project to, to use. Then in January, let me see, yeah, that'd be January. Then we could have the the real ordinance on there to get this going because we have to have it done before February, correct? Is that right? The sooner the better, but I think there are some no, later limits on how late you can wait. Right. So, so January or February. Okay. Is that does that sound good? Or? Uh, and, and of course, obviously, I presume you'd wave three readings and do that on one night. Mm -hmm. right. Spread it right. out, then that'd be a problem. So I think we've pretty much decided that we're going to go for a percent, right. three quarters of it bonded, one quarter permanent. Permanent. Mm -hmm. um, if y'all could work with whoever to come up with some priorities in terms of 
think we've that would have the that. biggest bang. If, if I may, I will take this charge from you. One, I'll prepare a, a, a resolution evidencing your um, official intent to go forward. I'll get that over to the I will refine ordinances one and two to be a general tax going to the general fund to be used for all legal purposes, any appropriate municipal purpose. And three, we'll refine the bond ordinance, which is bond ordinance number three, uh, along the lines tonight. Now, the things we won't know, and the things, of course, that I think Ann and Kirby and I will work with pre committee on is figuring out what is that maximum amount you can afford. Of course, it's a little moving target. Market's always moving. Market's moved a few basis points away from you since we had the workshop last week. So you probably have a lower maximum amount today than you could have borrowed and shown in probably projections the end for you next month. And that's just market risk. Something we can do about that. Yes. 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 We'll do it. We'll get those over to Steve and hopefully you'll have drafts in front of you long before your December meeting. I have to, I'm watching our public works director. I, do you have something you want to say? Well, I know originally I may be confused and having correct me if I'm wrong, but we were originally asking for a three quarter percent for streets to be bonded and then an additional quarter percent that would remain for street maintenance to kind of help offset the money that we're going to lose when that highway department tax um, goes away, I think, it, I think seven years from now. <clears throat> I'm just kind of concerned how we're going to bridge that gap if we don't don't have something to fill that when, when that goes away. So, uh, Brian, I mean, you're spot on. That, that was right. the street committee's proposal. Um, th this body has, has morphed that quarter percent uh, O&M into a general fund. And, and I told them they agreed. Also, that you know, there there needs to be something to go towards general fund. I just I don't know. Our bond attorney might could answer this. If 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 we could possibly at the end of the bond bond issue word it in such a way where you can keep a quarter of it to kind of help bridge that gap. No. no. <laughs> I, that was a real quick I believe the state highway department is already working on a um, a long term or a permanent. <clears throat> They're very much. I don't think it's even. It's not the four or five years before that's going to. Uh, so and I appreciate Brian's concern because street funds are not in the general funds. Right. But you so, can use general fund a street, but you can't use street in general. But we could take some general funds and give it to street for a maintenance project if it had to be. Okay. We well, just can't. We couldn't borrow from you. So, so to, to, Brian, to Brian's concern, I mean, we we've got Brian, what, 160 miles of, of roads in. You really probably ought to cover them over 15 years. But I mean, we'll cover over 10 miles a year, and we're going to go somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six miles a year. Uh, nearly a million dollars. In, well, you know, if it so does, even further behind the curve than the that might be a good time if it actually goes away to come go back. I, I would well, the community are going to be asking for it back. You know, that we would get much more if we had our own quarter percent of that uh, than what we're giving up. We're not getting near the proportion back that our residents are paying on that. Is it a half a cent tax? The half cent. It's half, and we're not getting near that. We'd get much more if that was just specifically to our to our general. But I think that might be an option if that does actually indeed go away. That that we'd go back and try to recapture some of that. So Brian, your concern is not lost on me. I promise you. Okay. It's not lost on me. I, I, I was thinking the same thing. So. No. You you Got to be dealt with. Oh, right. thank you for the guidance, and I sincerely mean that. I'm happy to spend as much time as you all want to do this. I would ask for your patience, but we'll get drafts over to Steve, and you'll have those to look at far enough in advance of your meeting uh, in December. That can thank you. If you'll let me know when the street committee meeting is, I'll do my best. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. I think I know the answer to this question, but is there any more old business? 
<laughs> Any new business? Way of announcements. Sherwood Citizens Police County Alumni Association on the border will donate 20% of 20% of lunch or dinner ticket on December 21st, 2017, and Papa Murphy's 15% of every sale goes to support the Sherwood Police Department on the following dates, November 30, December 28th. November Animal Shelter events, home for the holidays, adoption specials all month. The Sherwood Animal Shelter is a field of bowl sponsor site for food drop-off and pickup to help needy pet owners during the holiday season. Sherwood Trail of Lights open tonight and will continue until December 30th. Uh, the Christmas Parade is this Saturday, 2 o'clock. Breakfast with Santa is Saturday, December the 9th. The Duran Youth Center Santa Party is December the 9th. Um, Monday, December the 4th, will be the groundbreaking for the new expansion and renovation of the existing Seven Hills High School, December 4th, 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, December council meeting is moved from the has already been moved from the 4th to the 3rd Monday, which will be the 18th of December. I have one announcement. Go for it. For all fellow council members and audience members, Keep Sure Beautiful will be doing a yard of the month for Christmas decorations. And so I know this is a beautiful weekend this past weekend. A lot of people put their decorations up. So if there's anyone in your neighborhood that you think has a beautiful Christmas decorations, please snap a picture and send it to Stacy in the mayor's office and she'll get it to the appropriate individuals. That's all I have to say. I move we adjourn.